from Tokyo, Japan to Toronto, here's another episode of Binder Blunder. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Binder Blunders. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about brains. Actually, I'm going to be talking about cards that come out in the Return of the Duelist set that comes out at the end of August. A few cards in this set that I think are worthwhile looking at because some, because it may affect the price of some cards we're currently using and or have access to. The first card is Compulsory Withdrawal Device. It's a trap card. Each player chooses one monster they control and shuffles it into their deck. I can honestly see this card replacing Compulsory Evacuation Device. I understand Technically speaking, at best, it's going to become a 2 for 2, but I guarantee you there's going to be cards that this card can be used with. There is a monster and a, probably a few others from a long, long time ago that said if this card is on the field and is returned to the deck, horrible things happen. I'm also pretty sure that combining this with Reborn Tengu doesn't suck. This card has potential and it's going to be a common, so look into it. The second card is Galaxy Queen's Light. It's a spell card. You target one face up level 7 or higher monster you control, and all face up monsters you currently control become the same level as that monster until the end phase. So, all those horrible rank 7s, like Lucky Straight and ones that don't exist yet, probably may become a little bit more playable because this, plus a Treeborn Frog, and I don't know, everyone's favorite magician, Gagaga. Ga Ga. Well, you are easy access to rank 7s. I really see this card having potential and possibly making some of these cards less crap. So, if you want your lucky straights right now for 5 bucks, probably should get them before they jack up the price when this card maybe makes them a little bit more competitive. This next card has two things going right for it. It's a Sea Serpent Water level 3 and he's called Atlantean Assaultman. He is basically the introduction to the future. We're going to get an Atlantean slash Sea Serpent starter deck. It's going to make Deep Sea Diva amazing card. This card alone makes Deep Sea Diva finally have a great target. It's a 1400 that if you control another face up fish, Sea Serpent, or Aqua type monster, this card gains 800 attack. It makes him a whopping 2200 and you still have Diva. Combine this with some water arts, you have a pretty solid deck without having to do anything. And also Synchro Summon for level 5. And there's probably a lot of other cool things you can combo this card with. We just gotta figure it out. This next card is Unifolia, Holy Beast of the Forest. To be fair, it's the ugliest card I've ever seen in my life. It's a level 1 beast with 700 attack, 500 defense. If the only monsters in your graveyard are beast type monsters, you can tribute this face up card. Special summon one beast type monster from your hand or graveyard, except this card. This turn, that monster cannot attack. So, we get kind of a Lone Fire Blossom for Beast Monsters. Of course, it doesn't get it from the deck, but getting it back from the graveyard could probably work out very well in our favor. I'm just waiting for someone to find out some broken combos you can do with this card. It has lots of potential. The final and most ridiculous card in this set, in my opinion, is currently called Doggy! Exclamation point question mark. It is a normal spell card. If you control a face-up level 1 monster, add one level 1 monster from your deck to your hand. Period. During the end phase, if you did not normal summon a card with the same name as the added monster this turn, you take 2000 damage. What can you do with this card? Mystic Piper. Mystic Piper was a great deck to begin with. Now you have a search engine for Mystic Piper. You combine this with Treeborn Frog, and you have a solid, solid engine going around. Downside is, if you do not normal summon that monster, or a monster with the same name, you're going to take 2000 damage. So technically speaking, you can use it to add stall cards to your hand like Swift Scarecrow and Battle Fader, but taking 2000 damage would probably, probably not work in your favor. However, if you were playing some sort of stall Exodia deck, or Final Countdown deck, taking 2000 damage might not be the worst thing. Since everyone's using that trap card where if you have a difference of 2000 or more life points, for every, di for every 2,000 difference, you draw an additional card. Well, this just netted you 2,000 less. You add a piece of Exodia to your hand. You draw a few cards. Sucks. You can add the stall to your hand like I was saying already. This card has limitless potential, and a Mystic Piper Exodia deck might be in the works. Because it's pretty ridiculous. 
I hope you guys found this pretty informative and hopefully you're excited about Return of the Duelist. I am starting back up my original channel, Draco DMD. I will have a link in the description. So why don't you make your way back over there. I have not uploaded any new videos yet, but I have lots in the way. And I'm really excited to play this game. See you guys later. Oh, and one more thing. Don't make those binder blenders.